give us a 30,000 foot view. What is PG Backrest and what problem is it trying to solve? Okay, so obviously it's backup software for Postgres. Uh, it's not the first one. A lot of them have been written. Uh, we, we saw certain problems and we wanted to take a completely different approach. And so that's how PG Backrest was born. It was really designed in concert with Stephen Frost, who's a committer on the Postgres project. So he's got a lot of intimate knowledge about Postgres. Uh, I've also been a user for 18 years. Uh, so together we kind of pulled our knowledge and decided all other things being equal, let's say we didn't worry about uh, how much time we were going to spend developing or how hard it would be, what would a solution look like? Um, and the big thing that we decided was using the standard command line tools that are typically used in backup like rsync, tar, uh, you know, et cetera, was a problem. Uh, it put a lot of constraints on the software uh, in terms of parallelism, in terms of, you know, extra types of checks you could do against the data. And so our decision was to eliminate all of that, uh, come up with a, uh, you know, basically implement all that uh, in our software instead. And that would allow us, as painful as it would be to do all of that, that would allow us to then uh, implement all of these kind of cool features that, you know, people see in PG Backrest that would be very difficult to do using command line tools. Well, I mean, you could argue that, you know, I've got a, I've got a slave set up. I've got a read-only slave set up of, my, of Postgres, and there used to be some bolt-on solutions to do that. Now it's sort of uh, baked into the actual releases. Uh, isn't that a backup? Is, and isn't, isn't that sufficient for what we're trying to talk about today? Uh, a replica actually is not a backup. Uh, that's kind of like saying RAID is a backup. <laughs> um, the biggest problem with a replica generally is that uh, unless you have a replication delay built in, everything you do on the master is instantly reflected on the replica. So let's say you drop a table off the master. Well, that is go that table is going to be dropped in your replica almost instantly. So, uh, and of course, there are situations where an entire data center might go out. You might lose your master and your replica. So a replica should be considered part of an HA solution. Uh, there are a lot of components to HA. One of those is backup, uh, replication, other things like that. But a replica in itself is not a backup. Okay, well that um, and so what what extra features do you need to really have a backup then? Well, the main thing is you you need to be able to uh, move back in time. Uh, the whole you know there are certain things. Uh, so a backup might just be to recover from a hardware failure, uh, but in that case, actually replicas are your first line of defense. So if your master fails, you can fail over to your replica, and and you're good to go. So where backups come in really handy is uh, moving back in time. So you discovered that something bad happened to your data, uh, some big mistake was made, and so with a backup and with wall uh, write ahead logs from the database, you're actually able to restore a backup and then move forward to any point in time that you want to, uh, to recover that lost table, to recover that lost customer record. Uh, the other thing you can use backups for is to uh, say, bring up reporting servers or uh, do development work or, uh, you know, staging. And you don't really want to plug those things into your production environment, say, using base backup or, or something that would require direct access to prod. Uh, so you can do those sorts of things from your backups. Uh, you can also bring up new replicas from your backups. Uh, so there are a number of purposes, you know, even outside of disaster recovery that you can use backups for.